Yo, what's up everyone? Hope you are doing well and are ready to go over Records of Ragnarok chapter 91.2 or 91.5. Y'all know the drill with the spoilers and let's not waste any more time. First, a quick recap of the last chapter is in order. Last time on Records of Ragnarok, Okita brings out a new demon transformation and is feeling more confident to fight Susano. Wasting no time, he charges in while Susano charges another Amano Magaishi. Okita steps back and Susano launches his attack, creating a vacuum wave. Without hesitation, Okita jumps and deflects the attack and rushes Susano, who manages to block the attack. Susano, impressed with Okita's decision, tried to force him back but is met with a fierce resistance, acknowledging Okita's incredible boost in power and speed. Neither warrior was willing to relent. The two clash swords once again. Ares is bewildered by Okita's deflect feat and thankfully, Hermes gives us a brief explanation on what we just saw. Additionally, he also adds that the Amano Magaishi weakens over distance. Usually, this technique is supposed to be invisible, but factors like refraction of light, air density, and movement of air all allow Okita to anticipate the attack. Despite being able to see the technique, Okita is determined to prevent Susano from powering up another attack. He keeps the pressure on, engaging in a relentless close combat. During the close combat, Susano almost manages to land a couple blows, but Okita's speed left him untouchable, impressing even his teammates. Kendo elaborates that's all due to Okita being able to fully bring out his demon powers as opposed to when he could only bring out less than half due to his disease. With his true demon unleashed, Okita's newfound speed and power accumulated into a devastating blow to Susanoo's side, igniting the crowd's excitement. Although even after that attack, Susanoo doesn't falter and launches another Amano Magaishi downwards calling it Mugen. Realizing escape was impossible, Okita instinctively ramped up his heart rate, charging to disrupt Susanoo's attack before it could reach its peak. After clashing, he once again slightly deflects the attack to the side, and Susanoo surprised at his strategy upon first time seeing it. Okita commended Susanoo for his rapid power generation, but Susanoo's confidence remains unshaken. With an unwavering resolve, he declared his next move would end it all. Will Okita get lucky and be able to counter Susanoo's final attack? Or is Okita's fate already sealed with this next attack? This month's chapter opens with a shift in perspective to Jack and Locke. She questions if there's any way to counter Susanoo's Amano Magaishi. Jack highlights the peril of the technique in both close combat and at a distance, deeming it nearly invincible. Jack surmises that if he were to face Susanoo, he would target the core of the technique, Susanoo's left hand. Using his special right eye, Jack noticed Susanoo's unwavering confidence and conviction when directing his left hand towards his opponent. Jack deduces that the left hand is crucial for aiming and controlling Susanoo's immense power, and he states he would do anything to shatter this foundation. Meanwhile, Okita is curious about Susanoo's declaration of ending the fight, and he watches intently as Susanoo apologizes, wishing the moment of happiness could last forever. The tension rises as both fighters brace themselves, and like usual, Okita is the first to move and begins dashing left and right. Hermes wonders if Okita is attempting to shift Susanoo's aim to create an opening, but Zeus questions this strategy deeming it too reckless. Finding an opening would give Susanoo the time to gather the power he needs. At this point, Okita can't deflect the next strike, putting him in grave danger. Susanoo realizes the perfect spot and unleashes another Amano Magaishi. This time, Okita jumps over the attack, dodging the move, but at the same time, he's midair, leaving him vulnerable. Susanoo states 
Okita's death midair will be beautiful and claims that it's over as he launches his technique again. Everyone believed Okita was cooked except for him as he smiled, still going towards Susano. To everyone's surprise, Okita hurls his sword at Susano's left foot, throwing him off balance and causing his technique to miss. As Okita lands, he swiftly retrieves his sword and slices off the top of Susano's left foot, destabilizing him further and forcing him to stab his sword into the ground for support. Okita's leap had been but a bait, and he now challenges Susano again, launching into the air for a potentially fatal blow. All this was supposed to catch Susano off guard and finally surpass him, although Susano states once again that Okita's death midair will be beautiful. Using his left foot to aim and a stance called Gaio Juzaga, I believe that's how you say it, or English version is four cardinal behaviors, which allows him for a counter from any direction. Susano showcases the true essence of I. With this, he uses his immense strength to swing his blade from the ground towards the mid Okita, executing a technique named Amano Magaishi Yakumo, or Reverse Heavenly Demon Eight Clouds, whichever you prefer. Susano named this technique after he created an eight layer cloud that rose to the sky, reaching the heavens. This devastating move catches Okita off guard. He is struck and heavily damaged, particularly on his left side. Meanwhile, Susano boldly claims his victory and our new month's chapter comes to a close. So right off the bat, Okita isn't dead. There's no way they would kill him off so easily and honestly, Okita had this coming because lately he's been pushing Susano hard. Speaking of Susano, I once again have to tip my hat off to him because even after getting his foot sliced and being off his usual balance, my son still managed to catch Okita off guard and deliver a devastating blow, all without even flinching. Okita will have to fully slice off his left hand and foot to be able to fully stop Susano's ability to use his technique. Which now that Jack explained it, this technique is insane with his ability to be used up close or long range along with being usable in many different scenarios, with counters from every direction. With a move like that, Okita is really going to be on top of his game and outplay Susano using some 4D chess move. Okita throwing his sword was big brain and for a couple seconds I really thought the match was going to end there, but of course it wouldn't be so easy. Plus, we still haven't seen Okita's volume and his backstory and I doubt this match will end until we see one of those. It's pretty weird being this far in the fight and we didn't get to see a single thing about Okita, but with this serious injury, I believe we're bound to get some backstory, plus him bringing out his true power through the volume. Then again, one of my subscribers came in clutch and told me which chapter to jump to to know about his backstory. It's currently posted on the screen and honestly, I might make a separate video on his backstory to help enlighten people, but feel free to go check it out yourself if you want to read more of that manga. Still think it was hella bold for Susano to announce victory, but I guess we'll see about that in the next chapter. Anyway, fellas. That's all I have for today. Shoot a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, I appreciate giving me your time today. Thank you. Hope you have a good day. Stay safe out there, soldiers. Peace.